Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the first in a multiple part series called uh, Game Theory and Execution in Programming and Design and today we're going to be talking about Chunk Theory in Game Programming. So chunks are an incredibly useful thing and chunk is basically just referring to a space inside your level. It's like six by six tiles and you would save that as one chunk so for example here we have a little diagram say your level is this we would just separate them into boxes of six by six tiles and each one would be defined as a chunk and these would be stored in a multi-dimensional array which could easily be saved and loaded into your game so games that use chunk systems well we have minecraft and terraria those are just two times off the top of my head i didn't do too much research because you can look it up yourself, but they're not that hard to find. So, you'll notice two things about these games. None of them have a static map. All, Both of these games, they all have a map that can be changed by the player. Which is important because imagine having to sync like a thousand blocks in Terraria to the client from the server when playing multiplayer. That's not going to happen, right? That's going to cause some serious delay and uh, lag issues. I'm not talking about low frame rate, I'm literally talking about the definition of lag. Where you, there's a delay between the response from the client and the server. It's not going to work very well. So instead, what you could do is you could use a chunk and only send the necessary chunks. So here's an example. Here we have a player, right? Now he can only see, this is his view distance. But here we have chunks here and chunks here that are still loaded well why would we load these chunks the player can't see them it's they're loaded into memory but the player can't in even interact with them unless he moves forward so there's really no point in us loading that well if we separate them into chunks as I've done here with this grid you can see that any chunks that the player cannot see into should not be loaded like here 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 pretty much all around here those should not be loaded we only load the ones that he needs to see this is similar how, to mi how Minecraft works with view distance actually if you know about that so if the player moves down here well then these chunks should get loaded but these chunks should be unloaded from memory because they are no longer able to be seen from the player this will increase the performance of your game exponentially could you imagine if Minecraft with that infinite world was loading every single block you can do super computers to run that thing. You just couldn't do it on normal desktop PCs, especially in Java, which, let's face it, isn't exactly the most efficient language. Um, it's interpreted, after all. But, yeah, it's you really should use chunk systems to increase efficiency and performance. In general, they're just better. So, here we have an example of multiplayer systems. So, here we have, a, this is obviously the server view, and we have three clients here. They're all sitting around uh, doing nothing. There is no point in us loading the entire map. But we only really need to load the chunks that they can see, and each of them has this view that they can see. So all these red bits we don't need to load. We should only load the grey bits. So the server doesn't actually have to load those parts, and only when the client moves forward say should it start loading these bits but, and it can unload these bits it reduces a lot of the stress it re results in better networking you can run so servers on lower end systems which is always desirable you don't want to have to spend so much money on a computer that you're only going to use as a server so you don't need a super and it also will allow for more clients to be connected at the end of the day the more efficient your server is the better it will run m a lot of clients it's simple. You'll be able to have more players because you're only loading those necessary chunks. If you had another player here, for example, well, you just load these chunks, and it would be it would work fine. Now, if necessary, you can call in a chunk to load. That's easily doable, and you just uh, reference a chunk through an array, and then load it into memory. So say there's something in here that needs to be loaded all the time for it to work. Uh, say it's a, a machine or something. 
and it won't update that chunk unless it's loaded so you can just load it all the time and that's just one chunk you're not loading the entire area you just have to load that one chunk so you, this is a very basic explanation of how chunks work we're not going into the programming just the theory that's the point of this series so I hope you enjoyed I hope you it enlightened you at least a little bit in understanding chunks and uh, what to do it's a relatively simple concept putting it into practice a little bit harder but it's really not complicated at all and the benefits are so big compared to the actual effort required to put in I don't see why you wouldn't do it especially for sandbox games which allow each one of these players to change a chunk if a chunk is made here if an update is made here well it's only really sending the updates from that chunk to uh, this person here and this person here it doesn't have to yeah it's only sending this chunk instead of sending the entire map um, instead of sending the entire map to everyone do you see how messy that's already getting that's just a it's not yeah it's not nice to not have chunks so chunking it's just generally the way to do it. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Scripters talking to you about the implementation of chunks in the new series Game Theory and Execution in Design. Goodbye.